We are back with cut content. We're reaching the end. This is a this is like a combination of 23 and 24. Rosal's insane OP magic explained. Let's get it. Big deal about the content skipped in the anime. But this time I actually feel that we missed out on stuff. Okay. Reason being that there was so much more to Roswell's fight with Puck and Ram. I'm talking crazy magical techniques and even martial arts that really highlight. We did see a bunch of martial arts scenes. Maybe just a bit against Ram. There's some time and we saw Rosal pop off against Garfield and Ram as well. I mean, it was just a penetration, right, with his, his like, arm. But I think the show has shown us that he's not just the greatest magician in Lugunica. You would think that a magician is weak at, like, you know, melee range. No, Roswell is, like, the complete package. I like why he's the greatest mage in all of Lugunica. So, trust me when I say that the title of this video isn't clickbait. Okay. Roswell actually has some pretty insane- You know what was clickbait? Echidna's Tears Explained. That title was literally clickbait. You didn't explain shit. No details could have ever explained that shit. That was actual clickbait. Abilities. Like actual magic that no sane person would have ever been able to master. So let's do as we usually do and take a look at what we missed from the anime. I let's begin. But first, this oh. video is sponsored by Skillshare. Guys, get your Skillshare at... I don't think these exist anymore. I don't think these affiliate codes exist three years later. But hey, it is what it is. Trial starting to now, let's get back to the video. Episode 48 and 49. It started with Revenge. Covering Chapter 6 of Volume 15 of the Light Novel. Jumping straight into the fight between Ram and Roswell. The first thing we see is Ram's precise use of highly advanced wind magic. Not only did she send a series of invisible blades flying straight towards Roswell's legs, but she also made sure to cast it out of sync with her gaze so as to not give away where she was aiming for. She even added an extra feint to make things even harder for him. <laughs> Sounds like Ram's doing like fucking pump fakes like in basketball. There's like so much extra content and like how the combat works. Ram intentionally doing like no look like wind attacks, delayed like throwing off, but like in the anime there's no way we can appreciate any of those details. To someone like Roswell though. Defending against magic like this was nothing more than child's play. With a literal flick of his toes, he stopped her attack right in its tracks. <laughs> flick of his toes. What? Really? What he actually it did, says though, so in the was passage. use a slight stomp of his foot to rewrite the composition of her spell. What? He had used his gate to alter the mana that had come from her gate. Okay. Essentially nullifying her ability to use magic without with having his to toes. interfere with her gate directly. This was a level of skill that no sane person should have ever been able to acquire. But he's not sane. Let alone used right in the middle of a He battle. crazy. But for Roswell, this wasn't even his most impressive ability. And that's because his next was one that's described to be a power that verged on the realm of gods. What? To Ram's disbelief, he began the process of casting three different spells at once. Three separate. Not in the way of combining three different elements together by casting them in quick but succession. But independently. But instead a legitimate trio of simultaneous... Parallel processing, right? This is straight up just triple thread right now. Parallel, mul like multi-process is like, people can only do one task. Roswell is doing three separate tasks at once. Incantations. It was a feat involving a combination of both hand movements and verbal incantations that's believed to require the intellect of pretty much three brains. But even this so-called threefold magic still wasn't the limit to his power. Oh. Despite being exposed to all these godlike abilities, Ram could tell that he was still holding back on her. And it was for that reason that she truly believed that she still had a chance of victory. Roswell is too soft for Ram, even though he doesn't want to admit it. That already, the holding back shows it. So, the first thing we see in the anime is Ram about to be hit by this technique of multiple spells. A flaming serpent that was only stopped by a spell more Puck. powerful. Just because Puck was able to negate it though, didn't mean that he was stronger than Roswell. As he was right now, Puck was only at half the strength he normally was. So, even with Roswell not trying his hardest, both him and Ram would still have to give the raw if they had any hopes of winning. Who knows what this Roswell versus Puck was? Like, what strength was Puck at? 100% at this point in, Froze in the Memory Snow OVA flashback? Now, it's after this initial confrontation that we get a bit more context on the spell that Roswell had to put on Amelia. If you're wondering what exactly he did. Right, I was confused about that, but it has to do with how Puck and Amelia, they couldn't really interact much, right? It, well, he basically used his magic to change the conditions of Amelia's pact with Puck. Okay. You see, ever You can change the conditions of a pact like that? Since they had returned from the royal capital. 
Puck had found it increasingly difficult to leave the crystal he was housed in. Huh. At first, he thought it was simply due to the set period of downtime related to the pack's conditions. But as the days Why? continued, were the time he- What is his conditions? Wait, what? 5pm to 9am? He's doing a fucking graveyard shift. No, 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 This is when he's available. Nine to five is actually duty, right? And then this is when he's in the crystals. Period of downtime related to the pack's conditions. Downtime, downtime. But as the days continued where the time he was available got shorter and shorter. Eventually, Puck came to realize that his oath had been tampered with. As we find out, Roswell had changed it in a way that- I love how in this, like, we just said, change the conditions of his pact, and now we suddenly just go to oath again. I know he's relying on, like, scanlation, right? But like, oh, there's no consistency with oaths and packs. They're all the same shit. Oath pack vile. That slowly but surely removed Puck as Amelia's guardian. A feat that never should have been possible in the first place. I mean, a pact between a spirit We're and back a to spirit pact. major are practically unbreakable. We're back to a pact, but guys. the emotional impact from Amelia's fight with Subaru, combined with Roswell's centuries of experience from being around a spirit like Beatrice, made him capable of doing the impossible. Huh. As the two went on to continue their subtle talk about Hector, I'm not sure if it's only because Roswell has so much knowledge about spirits and shit, and that like, like this is a contract between a spirit and a spirit user, and he's he can literally change the conditions. That's fucking insane to me. But maybe it's just limited to that, and Roswell cannot just go around just changing other people's packs and shit. Being around a spirit like Beatrice made him capable of doing the impossible. As the two went on to continue their subtle talk about Hector. The way the anime portrayed it was rather confusing. I think there was a bit of a mistranslation for Puck's line about Roswell mimicking Hector's mannerisms. Reason being that Puck wasn't supposed to be talking about himself here. The actual context of this line was directed towards Roswell. Is it to remember your wounds or to punish yourself? Hector. So Puck was asking Roswell if his tendency to mimic Hector was a punishment or warning to himself. Yeah, there was another theory. I think one of it was like, why is he copying Hector's drip and the speech pattern of a guy that just like beats you and is like, uh, is like an antagonist against your mom? Because heck, in order to remind himself of this, like that's what we kind of talked about, maybe? Not the other way around. Anyway, the whole purpose of this entire conversation was to buy time for Ram. Had Puck not stepped in to do so, then her body would have already given out from fatigue. Once that conversation had ended though, both sides went straight back to fighting. So, it was after Puck and Roswell negated each other's spells out that Ram made the next move by casting some more wind magic. As you'd expect though, Roswell simply disassembled it much like how he did the last time, capturing it with his own gate then altering the mana into something different. It was immediately after that he began the same process for the simultaneous triple spell, except this time he had taken it one step further. Four. Once the incantations and actions to cast the three spells together were complete, Roswell then added a stomp of his foot to unleash an internalized fourth spell. Oh resulting shit! Resulting in a display of magic far beyond what any human was capable of. Can he go five? As for the attack itself, it was a bombardment of fiery missiles that homed in on Ram's location. Yeah, there's no way I can appreciate what Roswell's truly doing with just the anime. They're not going to go into the details of the mechanic. I think that's definitely one thing that gets lost in translation when adapting combat in such in-depth detail in the light novel versus the anime where you're just seeing shit just pop off. Whoops. Making it very difficult to dodge since each one of them needed to be intercepted or redirected. This was what allowed Roswell to land his punch on her. An impact that would have crushed her internal oh, organs had Puck not shielded her with some ice first. Because this shield device was now in the way, Roswell proceeded to change his Oh, this is my favorite scene again! The salary man is about to fuck up Emi Ashiro. And to try something different. Oh, no, never mind. He's fighting Saber this time. What the hell? The last time we, sh we were showing, you know, unlimited Blade Works footage through his videos, Shido was getting just, just like five-piece hit combo from this salary, man. He thrust his palm in a lunge-like attack that reverberated right through it. Bro, what the fuck has happened to S Is Saber actually taking even more L's? Bro, Fate Zero, Saber was the most unfor- Not the most unfortunate, but she did not have a single fucking dub. Straight up, she was just a fraud the entire time. And then it's like- UBW will be my redemption. Saber is now getting fucked up by a random salary man. What the hell? I thought servants are just on a different tier of strength compared to fucking masters. And here I see a, a, a salary man master beating the shit out of Saber? Dance and try something different. He thrust his palm in a lunge like attack that reverberated right God through. God damn. It. 
though the ice shield remained completely intact. Ramstall found herself to be hit by the full force of it. It was as if he'd just landed a normal punch. Oh, sweet. What this actually was, though, was a defense-piercing technique he'd learned from a ninja. An attack ninja. that propelled the shockwave it created forward, thus giving him the ability to physically strike a target from range. Ninja! The one ninja I know from this show is from Valakian Empire. Because it, it was the old guy design, right? I saw that old guy design and I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Yo, he's a fucking ninja? Remember that guy? He has a super long eyebrows. I saw his design and I wanted to know what he was about. Obviously, I don't want any spoilers. I just, I just saw his design. He was so fucking gross. Like, he's a fucking ninja? Well, like, yeah. So, like, there's ninja. Okay, it's a shinobi. My bad. Ninjas don't fucking exist. It's just shinobi. But, like, yeah, ninjas exist in this world, man. And they have, like, crazy martial arts, I guess. Roswell wasn't finished, but. Like, I wonder if he learned it from that specific guy with this super long eyebrows, though. He to physically strike a target from range. Roswell wasn't finished with only that, though. Since Puck was still peppering him with attacks from above. It made it difficult to take out Ram for good. So, after giving a very brief word of praise, Roswell began to use his lips, the actions of his hands, and the alternating stomps of his feet to begin the casting of bifold magic. <laughs> What's he gonna do next, bro? He's running out of limbs! He's running out of limbs! Is he gonna start fucking shaking his fucking ass? Is he gonna start just, just doing a fucking helicopter with his dick to do six-fold magic, seven-fold magic? Because you need to be just doing all these different things with your fingers, your feet, your fucking head, internally. Next thing, he's gonna be flopping his fucking dick, bro. This was the known pinnacle of what he was capable of. Centuries of training and study had made him capable of casting five spells. Dude, he surely can use his dick to create another magic, right? He must be able to. It's just in my head. Just imagine that. He's running out of limbs and appendages to fucking use more magic bolts. All right. My dick is coming out. Same with my fucking ball sacks. And I'm going to be torquing. Both my left cheek and my right cheek is also going to be responsible for one fucking core of magic, bro. One shaft. Okay, his dick, right? The shaft can be one another fold. Each ball sack left and right can be another fold, right? His both booty cheeks... Each cheek can be it. What else do we have left, bro? Bells all at the same time, resulting in the Super Saiyan version of him we see in the anime. Now, the reason for Roswell's disappointment in Ram was mostly due to her inability to follow through with her vengeance. Just like how he wanted Subaru to become his co-conspirator, so too did Roswell want Ram to be his perfect end. Mm. He wanted her to walk the same path as him and eventually be the one to bury him. The thing is, it was this very revelation of his ignorance that led Ram to give her confession. Yes, Roswell's negligence to defend the Oni village from the witch cult did result in its destruction. Yeah. But what initially began with vengeance had now blossomed into love. Okay, some positive ways to justify why the grooming is all okay, right? A love she felt could only be conveyed in this very significant moment of weakness for him. Given that Amelia, Subaru, and Garfield had all betrayed his expectations and Poor Garfield, man. Garfield really gonna lose to this fucking pervert clown, bro, who groomed this girl, man. Poor Garfield. Even shaking his heart. Now more than ever was the best time for Ram to try and change him. It was her one and only opportunity to steal him from his obsession. So, as Puck and Ram initiated the final parts of the battle, it wasn't the mirrors that bought Puck time to activate his astral transformation. Oh? It was instead a clever trap meticulously set up by the two of them. You see, Puck began to bombard Roswell with a barrage of human-shaped ice sculptures from above. A series Why of attacks that were actually nothing more than a distraction. His true intent was to get Roswell so focused on above that he would completely ignore the possibility of any attack from below. So, when he stepped backwards to evade another person-shaped pillar of ice, a massive burst of wind appeared from directly beneath him, Ram. sending him flying into the air in a way that restricted his movements. This was what allowed Puck to activate his trump card. Or at least make it seem like he did. Even though Puck didn't actually activate his astral transformation, the fact that he made himself bigger without Roswell seeing was enough to make Roswell think that he did. Now, since this was Roswell's worst case scenario, it made him consider using his own trump card of sixfold magic. Oh but shit, for... the dick is actually coming out, bro. He can go sixfold. He's gonna be actually bringing his dick out to shake it. Reasons not yet known, Roswell wasn't able to cast it. So, rather than use his full power to try and beat the great- Hmm, for reasons unknown? Because he thinks that it looked too ridiculous? No, there must be a plot-related reason why the six-fold magic, there's like a special condition that we don't know. I mean, I bet the anime is never going to tell us, because like, these kind of detail, 
Like the anime is never gonna adapt because that's way too just fine details that you'll only see in the light novel. Your spirit in front of him. He instead. <laughs> yeah, the head cannon is he needs to be hard and it's too cold outside, so his his limp dick cannot be erect enough for the six fold magic. Decided to save what he had left and prolong the battle with everything he could. It was only after he activated his next spell that Roswell realized Puck didn't actually transform. He was so caught up in trying to figure out what to do next that he didn't even consider that this too was part of the trap. So what came next was a barrage of wind magic intended to block his vision with clouds of dirt. Ram then kept herself hidden as she used clairvoyance to determine when he was looking away from her. The instant Roswell peered towards the edge of the forest to see if he could spot her. Got him! That's when Ram pounced from directly beneath him. With the horn out! As it turns out, she had actually been hiding within one of the human-shaped ice pillars the entire time. Oh, that's so human-shaped. So he was actually much closer to Roswell than he ever could have imagined. Once she confirmed he was completely unaware of her presence, Ram then used her last ounce of energy for one final attack. An incomplete Oni transformation lasting no more than two seconds. Alright, so it is possible for her to be in that Oni transformation, but just for a short while, right? And, like, at this point, I wonder how powerful she is. She probably doesn't have all the powers of her, like, back when she used to have her horn. But I wonder if she all actually does reach, like, full potential here only for, like, two seconds. Bringing us to the climax. Oh, that's really quiet. One second, one second. Take final moments of this episode. In the post-battle moments of the next, Roswell truly couldn't understand how Ram's feelings had come to be this way. For her vengeful heart to have made such a sharp turn was quite literally one of the biggest betrayals in anime. I mean, she was the one person whose feelings Roswell believed would never change. And yet she did. It was the did. very reason why he was going to eventually offer himself up to her. Like, literally foiling Roswell's entire philosophy of, like, feelings will never change, yet the person you groomed, she changed. But now he couldn't even fathom what was happening around him. In fact, the only reason he began to heal her was out of a subconscious compulsion to do so. Deep in the back of his mind, Roswell knew he had to keep her alive. She was, after all, the supposed end to his story. The finish line he'd set up for himself after everything was finished. So he says that she, she like, he wants to, <laughs> Ram should be the one to bury Roswell. Roswell will stop making clones of himself at some sort of end when he has accomplished his goal of Echidna? I'm not sure. But I thought that Ram was more than just like someone to bury him, but was like an answer for Volcanica due to her immense powers. So it was that need to fulfill an objective he'd established for himself long ago that he gambled on keeping her alive through an influx of mana. That was the only thing he could do without the book guiding him. Now, as the snow began to fall in Sanctuary, we find out the reason Roswell couldn't cast his six-fold magic was because it would have interfered with the magic he'd inscribed on the crystal. So Roswell had to One more time. Was because it on Sanctuary. We find out the reason Roswell couldn't cast his six-fold magic was because it would have interfered with the magic he'd inscribed on the crystal. Okay, it's not that his dick was limp. It's just that his dick was too busy with this one. It was occupied. So Roswell had pretty much been fighting the entire battle with a handicap. His true power had always been diverted to the magic that needed to make the snowfall. The snow, that's right. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the stuff with Roswell. Okay. The next episode will be out Wednesday and cover the scenes with Subaru. Yes, sir. So be sure to come back then to see all the content you need to know before the- We will be there. There's another part covering just the Betty stuff, but again, there's so much like interesting details in how the combat works in ReZero. And it really does like make me appreciate how strong Roswell is. Like bro is doing like five separate, potentially six, right? His like trump card is like six- Parallel processing at once, just having six separate magics, not combined, all independent, just popping off. But you can never really appreciate that until we get the finer details of the light novel. But there's a channel. Please give Mr. Anthony's a like in the video. Check out his channel if you haven't. And I'll see you next time.